Hello friends, welcome to Knitography. I'm Patricia and I'm coming to you uh, this weekend outside of my little barn on our farm in the middle of Norway. I hope you've been well since the last time we visited. Last weekend I had hoped to uh, share with you the Eventyr Vaulted book overview, but unfortunately I had a little accident uh, with the corner of our kitchen cabinet when I was emptying the dishwasher. And I really uh, injured myself and uh, was not at all feeling well. Uh, I don't know if you've ever done that yourself, but um, I really um, uh, injured myself emptying the dishwasher in that way. And uh, I just, I recorded, but I just, I don't know, I wasn't logical and I had a lot of pain and I just felt that it wasn't, I wasn't myself. So I decided that I would just um, wait until this weekend when I was feeling better and start over again. Um, yeah, it was uh, not, it's a bit silly to say what was wrong or what I did, but um, if you've ever lifted yourself up and, and hit yourself on the corner of a cabinet, you might um, understand that is quite painful. So I just wanted to be outside this weekend and uh, talk with you. It is, it is, uh, there's no wind. Um, it's a very overcast kind of day, but um, the temperature, I've got, I've got like three layers of wool on. It's, it's chilly, but um, I've got my Roma Fine Ul uh, blanket that I take on trips and I'm sitting on my sheepskin and I just wanted to be outside. Uh, it's getting that time of year where I'm going to be recording again outside and I just thought today's the day. And uh, I work uh, on my Selbu blockers just behind this uh, barn door. Uh, it needs a coat of paint. We often have to do lots of touch-up painting in the summer. And this has been quite a cold, harsh uh, winter. And so this uh, barn door is going to need a bit of paint. But uh, this is, uh, behind here is the woodshed where we do all of the sanding, uh, the initial sanding, and uh, the woodwork. And we also dry all of our birch wood in here. We um, we heat our house uh, only with wood, and so all of our wood stock is in here. This door is actually where my sheep will be housed, and uh, just beyond that is the chicken house. So this is the animal uh, part, and uh, the sheep will, of course, be free range. There's an opening. The chickens will be free range. Uh, but yeah, this is our barn, the area. Yeah, this is a special building for me. So I thought today, um, I don't think I've ever sat really outside the barn uh, to share with you. And so it's it's a day where uh, I think I could do that and begin to get outside again. And I am really only going to be giving you uh, an overview of the Evan Walter book. So if you are interested in purchasing the book, you can find that uh, link below. You can find out how to contact me. And I have now made a, a blog post where all of the translations and tips and help. I'm going to just keep um, updating that page as I get questions. Below the page you can comment and interact together, share the mittens that you're going to knit, maybe ask me a question uh, if you're stuck and I haven't covered it. Um, I'm going to try to cover everything but I'm certain that there will be things that I forget. And uh, I'm going to tell you an overview of the book, as I said, and also uh, we're going to talk about uh, the first story, uh, the first fairy tale in the book. So first of all, I just want to start off by saying thank you to the Valtologa. Um, if it wasn't for the Valtologa, I would not be able to share this trunk show with you. Uh, because if you're going to have a trunk show, you really need to uh, see the knitted pieces and... Uh, 
uh, you know, I needed permission to do that, and they have been so gracious to share with me uh, uh, the majority, if not all, of the mittens from the book. I'm missing a couple of pairs, but um, I'll explain that as I go along. Um, if it wasn't for them, and also getting permission to to uh, sell the book uh, from the publisher. Um, I don't really know the agreement they have with the Votologa, but I have uh, uh, been given that permission, and uh, it's allowed so many books. I have five shipments of books, which is 50 books uh, out into, uh, uh, around in the world, outside of Norway, is actually what I want to say. So uh, today I'm going to actually just walk you right through this book. I'm just going to acclimate you with the contents of the book and uh, then we will, I'll tell you the first uh, fairy tale and I'll show you those mittens. And uh, I know a lot of people thought that I was going to start with the mitten that I showed you first on Instagram, but that's not true. I'm actually going to go chronologically uh, through the book to support you and uh, I think the support will allow you uh, to choose uh, whichever mitten you want to knit first. Um, if you choose a mitten and you're stuck, of course, all you have to do is contact me and I will uh, help you with that. So it is a stressful time for me. I am um, heading to Edinburgh Yarn Festival. I have a lot to pack. I have a lot to make sure is going on uh, with my little farm project project uh, while I'm away and so I've been working kind of double time um, yeah I've been working a lot uh, in the evenings and of course I teach full-time during the day um, it's it's been a little stressful uh, but I know my little dream is gonna be a little bit stressful from time to time but it's mainly because I want to go to Edinburgh and uh, have that experience so as I said, this video is about the book, and then I'm hoping that I'll get to record a regular uh, update, vlog update, uh, part three of this tomorrow. But today, I'm going to use this time to go through the book. So if you've gotten your book, or if you're waiting on your book, of course, you can come back to this video and re-watch it as often as you need. Um, but if you have your book. I hope that you have just perused the book uh, and seen all of the beautiful uh, photographs and that the mittens are just photographed so beautifully. You, you know with this book the mittens are the focus. Um, they are beautifully photographed in many different settings but you get visually a beautiful uh, um, yeah, you get to see up close the mittens, and I think that's one of the reasons why I love this book so much. Um, you get to see the cuffs, you get to see the body of the mitten. In most cases, they uh, turn the mitten over and they allow you to see the thumbs and so on. So, here's the book, and when you open it up, you begin with the table of contents, um, and of course everyone knows it's the table of contents, but I wanted to just share with you this uh, Norwegian word inhold, and the word hold, and hold is what the book contains. So um, there are many connections uh, of from Norwegian to English if you if you think a bit logically and uh, as I learned the language I tried to make those connections so that I could uh, learn to be fluent um, and then when you turn the page uh, you have the story of the Votologa and it's really lovely because in Norwegian it says Devar Engang and Devar Engang means once upon a time so um, they they tell you here the story of uh, the Votologa that's on page five. And what I really like about this story is that these women who live all the way from the north of Norway to the south of Norway, they actually uh, did not know each other. And um, 
they came together to form this mitten guild. So that on that page is just their story of coming together, working together collabor collaboratively uh, to publish this book. Now, what's really going to be helpful for you is that on this page, you have the list of all the members of the Vatologa. And I encourage you to put their names into the search uh, field on Ravelry and go and look at their other designs. Um, they are prolific designers, some more than others, um, but uh, they are, yeah, they are designers. They are, uh, one of them is a natural yarn dyer, and she is, she really is a scientist of the forest. And, um, uh, another one, I think, works with uh, milled wools and, and so on. So they have many, they have much knowledge uh, to contribute uh, from, from Norwegian knitting traditions. So I encourage you to do that. And then the last thing on page five, you're going to have their, uh, you're going to have their website that you can go to. That is the website that is, uh, uh, created for this book for the uh, fairy tale mittens so that's on page five and then as you turn the page of the book you begin to um, I do have notes so I'm looking down sometimes but you have the techniques and I'm gonna go through the techniques during the trunk show not today but I am gonna go through the techniques you've got the cuff and they give you an overview of the techniques of the cuffs that are used within the book. Um, you've got the Latvian braid. And for me, the Latvian braid explanation in this book is the best I have ever found. So I'm going to dedicate a special section of the trunk show to teach you their method of the Latvian braid braid. It's kind of like the Kitchener stitch. Once you memorize it, then, you, then you're then you able to do the Latvian braid uh, anytime you need it. I have read many explanations of the Latvian braid, and again, this is the best one around, the Norwegian one, or this the one that they use in this book. The next one is about thumbs, and they give you quite a lot of explanation uh, about thumbs and the body of the mitten and uh, you know are you going to pick up stitches uh, and and put your stitches on hold with waist yarn and so on or the afterthought thumb they really have a modern take uh, on their techniques so of course I learned all the old traditions here in Norway but they have a very modern um, perspective on it and they explain it and we will go through that they talk about the top of the of the mitten and decreasing for the top like the Selbuvalter mitten. And once you learn that technique, um, which I will also try to share with you, uh, then you, you won't have any problem doing that. The next bit is about following the diagram and uh, following the regular diagram and then following the thumb diagram. And they use the stair step method. So if it goes out, you know you're increasing. So these, uh, the, the um, gusset of the thumb, they use that mes method in which you, you know, you're, you're going out, you're increasing, out, you're increasing, and so on, like stairs. The next bit is about the, um, uh, the, where you're using uh, the, um, what, a stranded color work, and uh, they talk about color dominance, which I think is interesting and I want to go into. Um, you know, the Arna and Carlos video came out, and, and of course they said that uh, there's no such thing as color dominance in Norway. And I tend to agree with them, uh, but for reasons that I want to explain a little bit before I move on. The reason I think there is no uh, color dominance uh, conversation in Norway is because Norwegians know which color is their background color and they know which color is their pattern color or the, or the co color that pops more. There's not a lot of talk about it. So I think that's why it might be a bit strange for Norwegians to have this co conversation because 
they take it like for granted. They just take it as part of their knitting. So um, they, they have a modern approach to the color dominance, and I will share this paragraph with you uh, in upcoming blogs. I'm gonna, vlogs. I'm going to break this down a bit for you. The next page is about um, weaving and ends, and it looks like Anne Mira, one of the Voteloga, has a video on, on that, which I will, when I get into that, I'll share that video with you. The next bit is about gauge and about um, the sizes, and on my website I have translated, you know, child uh, ladies, men, and so on, so you'll be able to follow this. But just be aware that it's all in centimeters. They talk about needles, they talk about yarn, and um, I wanted to tell you that on page 141, they list all of the yarn used in this book. They give you the websites of all of the Norwegian yarn. Most of the yarn is Norwegian. Even my local Selbu Spinneri is listed in here. Um, they, ha they do have some other companies. Uh, a couple of them are Norwegian. One of them, I think, is Finnish. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, an indie dyer, Nina, Nina Petrina, which she is fantastic. And um, Nestabarn, which is a, a like a commercial a company all in many cities around Norway. So the yarn reference is such a beautiful reference. I wanted to go back. I see that I made a note about the... Um, the gauge and I absolutely I actually learned this little they have a little uh, tip in here that I use all the time if you want if you have your 10 centimeters and you have more stitches in your 10 centimeters you know that the mitten is going to be smaller so here it says if you have more stitches in 10 centimeters you know that the mitten is going to get smaller if you have less stitches in your 10 centimeters you're making a bigger mitten i find that helps me that tip you know you're either going up a needle size or you're using a different uh, weight of yarn so just kind of use that tip to help you know like if you if it's a lady's mitten and you need to make it bigger that means that you've got to have less stitches in the 10 centimeters than it calls for that's just a really good good tip and i do come back to this book for many of the uh tips that they that they use on this page they show you how you can use magic loop or you can use uh dpns so yeah again uh most norwegians use double pointed needles and don't really understand about magic loop that i know and so really these women have an extremely modern approach that's why i think this book is just you know just has to get out of norway because they're not just uh you know, they're not limited to just the Norwegian way of doing it. So it will be easy for those of you that like magic loop or, or double pointed needles. On page 14, you see there is a key. I have translated this key on, on, the, on my blog. You will find this whole key translated so that you can use it during the book. And then here they just show you all the, uh, the varieties of the different mittens. And then once you, let me see, uh, you know, I told you that they uh, talked about one of the techniques about decreasing at the top. And I'm going to also put this on the blog, but, on the blog, but um, you know, if you just know that you're looking at the mitten and you're going to decrease to the left, you know, if you're going to decrease this way so that it you get the uh the um the triangle that goes that leans this way this diagonal um that is a right uh decrease and that is your slip slip knit slip slip knit is always on this side if you're looking at the mitten on this side you always have uh knit two together so if it's leaning this way it's slip slip knit 
and if it's on this side, it's knit two together. If you're just looking at the diagram straight on. Um, let's see what else is on my notes. Then as you go along in the book, uh, they talk about um, that the cuff, the body, and the thumb can be any length that you want. You know, you're going to make it fit your hand. So if you want a longer cuff, you want a thumb that is a bit shorter, like me, sometimes I knit my thumbs a bit shorter. Or if you need, if, you, if your hand is longer, you can knit that. I mean, they just say you can make it longer or shorter. And all of these patterns pretty much allow you to do that. The needles are up to you. What they don't recommend is superwash wool. I don't either. I just do not see uh, knitting mittens with superwash wool in my climate. I mean, they do say in the book that you can decide yourself, but mittens, um, they need to... In order to, after you knit them, you know, and you block them, this, the stitches need to uh, bloom together. So it's a bit tricky if you use superwash wool. It's too slick for mittens. So they do not recommend it, but of course they say you can use what you want. And what's really beautiful about the Evan Walter book is most of these mittens were designed so that you could use your leftover yarn. I have, I have knit almost all of these mittens and in most cases I have used my leftover yarns. Um, I will show you along. As a matter of fact I have one today uh, that I will show you. Uh, the other thing in the tips and techniques and things that you need, uh, they say that you're going to need a tapestry needle, you're going to need some stitch markers, and as I said, you're going to find the key uh, uh, of translations on my blog, Knitography. Now, we're going to get into the patterns. Um, the first pattern is by... Uh, Anne Sheehan, and she is actually the natural dyer uh, forest scientist that I uh, told you about. This pattern I'm going to come back to to tell you the story uh, because this is the basic pattern. And what dawned on me when I was getting ready for the trunk show, and I told you that I was reading another Alf Preysen book story. This is the Alf Preysen mitten. This is the green mitten. So I want to knit this mitten. I want to tell you the story of Askeladden. Uh, it's a Norwegian kind of fairy tale. This is a basic mitten for people that are maybe getting started to knit mittens. Um, it is an anatomically correct mitten, and it's perfect for the story uh, that I want to tell you by Alf Preysen. So I'm going to come back. I'm skipping the first mitten, but just know that that is the basic mitten. They started off with this. Look, she's used all sorts of extra yarns to do this. Now, I do not have a pair that she's knit, but, um, you know, I need to reach out to her and ask her, but... These are probably mittens um, that she has used or given away as gifts or whatever. But I am going to knit this for uh, the grønne voltna, the, the green mitten. So the first pattern that I want to share with you is the Blåbær Skogen pattern by Venke Ruolt. Now Venke is a prolific designer. You can find her work on Ravelry, and you will see that her blog is listed here. So at the top, you've got the title, The Blueberry Forest, you've got the designer, and you've got her actual website. Put her name into Ravelry, and you will see beautiful designs, beautiful cardigans, shawls, mittens. She is a well-known and... Uh, yeah, designer here in Norway. And I got to meet her in person, which was thrilling. <laughs> so, yeah, I followed her a long time. Um, and then you've got a little blurb about the story, which I'm going to tell you. 
So I want to tell you a little bit about Puta. Puta is, uh, the story is called Puta's Aventure in the Blåbærskogen. So Puta's, um, let me see how they translate it in English because you can actually find this book in English. It is not a Norwegian fairy tale. It is a Swedish fairy tale, uh, but it is in Nor in Norway. It's been translated, so it's a well-loved uh, fairy tale here, but its origins, the, the author is Swedish, and it's called Peter in the Blueberry Land. So Peter is, it's his mom's birthday, and he wants to go into the forest and pick his mom a basket of blueberries for her birthday. And he goes into the forest and he can't find a single blueberry. And uh, so he begins, he sits down on a tree stump and he begins to cry. But all of a sudden he feels a little uh, nudge on his leg. And he looks down and there's a teeny tiny little Nisa called a Guben. Uh, He's, we would say Nisa, but I think the Swedish would say Guben. And so he tells him, don't cry, come with me, and uh, I'll, we'll, I'll take you to the blueberry land. And so they go, and in the book there's all sorts of um, uh, adventures. This is a beautiful book. Now, what's really sad is that I needed to get this video out to you before I traveled to Edinburgh, and the book is on its way. I had to reserve the book, and so I'm going to show you the book the next time. So he goes in and there's a, a, an adventure with animals in the forest. There's these little blueberry and, and, uh, and tittebad, which is the wild cranberry people. And it's just a beautiful book. Anyway, in the end, he does get a basket of blueberries and wild cranberries for his mom uh, for, uh, for her birthday. Now, if you go on YouTube and you put in Peter in Blueberry Land, you can actually hear someone singing the book uh, in Swedish, and you can see some of the beautiful illustrations. So if you're interested in that, I encourage you to do it. If I remember, I'll put the link below. Um, someone is actually singing it, and, I, and they just kind of videoed like around in the book on different pages. And if you like fairy tales like me, that, that can be something you would love to see uh, because the illustrations, uh, they're, they're gorgeous. Until I can show you the book next time. Now, the, the pattern then is, um, the pattern is not Selbu style, but it is a, you've got the Latvian braid, you've got the diagram that you're going to follow, you've got another Latvian braid, you've got the diagram, you've got a Latvian braid, and then you get into the diagram chart. And as you knit up, you know, you see you're going to knit two repeats, then it's going to be that you're going to start for your thumb. I mean, that's what's beautiful about this book. And when you don't see Norwegi speak Norwegian, you see it visually. I mean, if you, you can kind of understand it. You see you're going to knit two diagrams, and then there you go. You're going to put something on hold for the thumb. And then the thumb is um, knitted up, and it's a rounded decrease at the top. The decreases are like a, like a star decrease. And then you continue on. You knit another... So here she's knit one, two, three, four, five repeats of the pattern, and then she's gone to the uh, regular color and done the rounded top. Now, all of the patterns follow the same uh, layout, so that's really nice when you don't speak Norwegian. So, you know, you've got your little, the little blurb from the fairy tale, which I'm going to tell you, and then she gives you kind of an overview uh, she says, this uh, mitten is a model without a thumb gusset. It's simple. Um, the, the cuff is what's uh, really the most, you know, intricate part of it. Um, she's used the rounded decreases on the top and on the thumb. Um, and so on. Now, here, the first thing you'll find with every pattern is the sizes. This one can be a child's six to eight years old or 
a ladies and that's going to be a ladies regular average medium size in parentheses she's used roma pete too which is now roma Finil finilgarn so roma finilgarn and pete too have gone together to make one yarn and they sell that at the woolly thistle they sell it at uh, yasolda sells it so you can get you can actually knit this mitten in the yarn that venka has knitted out of um, she also says to use your leftovers. Um, and so then you can use many different things. You know, you can use Jameson, you can use uh, Tuku. All your leftovers will make a beautiful mitten. I'm going to show you how I did it. Uh, uh, F1, Farige and color one, Farige two, color two, Farige tre, and so on all the different colors and she even tells you like for the ladies she used 35 grams for the next color four grams i'm just talking about the ladies um 15 grams and so on so you don't need very much to knit this mitten she also gives you some alternatives osk hifa osk hilisvog osk the other norwegian yarn and she talks about somnes tova which is a uh, uh, a very commercial company here in Nor Norway, but that's a rustic yarn and Roma Tumi. I have no idea the content of Tumi. It might be an alpaca blend. The Strikifostet, the gauge is next 24 stitches, 10 by 10 centimeters or 4 by 4 inches. I think the 30 is omgang at 30 rounds. That's your row gauge. Now she says that you're going to use a three millimeter or a 3.5 millimeter for the ladies, you see it's in parentheses, and a 2.5 for the uh, cuff. Now, Norwegian cuffs are really fitted. You can understand why, it's cold. We want them to be fitted. I know a lot of people have commented that with Ellie at Skandir's uh, Selby Walter, but there's a reason for that. We like our cuffs to uh, be more fitted than you would be used to with regular mitten cuffs. They need to, to keep out the cold. So you've just got to start your cuff um, she suggests a 2.5 millimeter, but you know, you're going to have to try it on, especially when you are using this book as a second language with English. And that's what I do. I just, whoever I'm knitting it for, I get my gauge and I get them to try it on and so on. Um, you just want to choose the needles that gives you the right gauge. Now, she says here that you are going to have 48 stitches on the women's in the cuff, and then you're going to increase up to uh, in the vault, in the mitten, to 50. And then it's the length. Lengda is the length. The cuff length is next. Um, around omkrets. I don't have that translated on my blog, but I will do that. Omkrets is the circumference. And then she's got the, the length from the thumb here to the top, and she's got the length of the thumb. So all of this mall is lengths. Okay, and then on the next page, it says manchet barn, that's the cuff for the child. Manchet dama, that's the cuff for the lady. And then you've got your cuff diagram, and you've got your... Uh, blueberry diagram and you can change that of course to any color I'm going to show you that you see here she's done it in like a, a gradient and here is the child's cuff it's a little bit different um, she talks then about the knitting of the body and felling is the decreases and then she's got the thumb and then you turn the page and then you see the different varieties She's done a wild cranberry, uh, she's done a green and a yellow, and um, it says you can just change the color on the berries so that it becomes wild cranberries or blockabide, which I don't know how to translate that into English, klekling, bjornabide, which is um, blackberries and so on, cherries, uh, 
raspberries, strawberries. Uh, she just lists all the berries that we find in the Norwegian skogen. I, I think that's lovely. Um, you can do a a regular one colored or striped uh, cuff uh, with two uh, knits, two pearls. You can change the cuff up on this if you don't want to do the Latvian braid and so on. And she says um, that you can use uh, your, your waist yarn. And then she says uh, you can use the Troll Ungens, the, the Nisa, uh, yeah, the Troll uh, Child's favorite um, dessert, which is Troll Papa's Bjar Symphony. And let's see, I'm going to go to page 22 to show you that she made this out of a, a, a fa she calls this a favorite dessert with all the berries in it. That's sweet. Okay, I'm going to show you that one. Um, if you choose thinner or thicker yarn or thinner or thicker needles, um, you can make a larger or a smaller mitten. Now the best part. So that is the Blåbær Skogen, the first pattern that I'm going to deal with uh, this week. Now the trunk show, which is the best bit. And you have to understand, it is thrilling for me. Can you imagine? Uh, having in your possession the actual mitten that the designer Venke Ruald knit. It's it's incredible. Um, so I want to show you first the original mittens. These are the originals. And you see the beautiful, um, the beautiful Latvian braid here. You see, and the cuff is fitting nice and snug. Here's the Latvian braid, and then you do the diagram and so on. And then you've got your thumb. And I wanted to show you what I mean by the rounded top. The decreasing on the top. It's like a circular decrease. So you get this kind of, you know, uh, rounded, uh, rounded decreasing. And that is the same on the on the thumb. Yeah, these are just stunning. Just stunning from top to bottom. And um, it's, oh, they're so beautiful out of the Roma. Uh, of course, I, Roma is my favorite yarn, but they're just so beautiful and warm and Oh, I love this mitten. I have knit many pairs of this mitten and given them away as gifts. I'm going to show you a sad gift uh, in just a second. Now, here's the one that she talks about is like a, 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 the, the troll child's uh, favorite dessert because it has all the berries in it. Now, these are the cloud berries color. Uh, up here that you find in the very tip tops of the mountains. Here's the wild cranberries. Here, I guess, are the the ra wild raspberries, the blueberries, you know, and so on. What I really love about this one is look how she's done the Latvian braid in such a colorful and interesting way. Not just a white, not just a base color. So those are these that are photographed in the book. Um, I'm, I'm assuming these are knit also out of, um, let me, let me just double check. I'm assuming they're also, they feel like Roma Ul. Um, she doesn't say, uh, that I know of. I, I'd have to check deeper, but they do feel, yeah, maybe they're another Norwegian yarn. Um, but they, oh, they're so lovely. And here I think you can see better the the rounded uh, decreases that you're going to decrease. You know, it's a, let me just read it to you for that, uh, for that rounded decrease. That might help because, you know, it's where you're going to knit. Uh, first you knit five, knit two together. Knit 11, knit two together. And then you knit four, knit two together. Knit three, knit two together, knit two, and so on. And so you get this kind of a spiraled round top. Um, 
on these. Now, another of the, um, this one is knit in Hifa Osk or Hillesvag Osk. It's so, oh, I love Osk so much. This is another uh, Norwegian wool. And this one was knit by another one of the, um, uh, by another one of the uh, Vatteloga. And her name is uh, Mayfrid. And she lives down south. And uh, she knit this one with a beautiful dark diagram and spring cuff. And then she did like a gradient of the warm reds and oranges. I really love this one. Now, Hifa Osk, this mitten feels, this is a little bit bigger, you see. This mitten is, uh, is, is a bit looser. So she's either used, uh, let's see, she's uh, Hifa Osk. And she knit it with a with a side thumb instead of the the anatomical uh you know the thumb that Venka used but this isn't it says it's knit with a alternative thumb look at these sweet little labels oh i love those so um she sent me this one which i was so appreciative of i'm sure it's also uh photographed within the book okay the lovely lovely child one look at this one Look at the cuff. So this one is um, a Latvian braid. And then the child's cuff. Let me just talk about that child's cuff. Because, oh, these are so fun to knit. I've knit several, several, several of these. But I have to always look. So on this one, they have done a, uh, they've cast on 40 stitches. And they've done, um they've done uh, a little bottom here and then they have added the second color and they've knit the latvian braid and then they've done um two pearls no two twisted knit stitches you see the twisted knit stitch here and then two pearl stitches so this one is using the twisted knit isn't that beautiful and then the little thumb and the same rounded decreases on the top. These are absolutely precious. These sweet little uh, child mittens. Oh, it's going to be so difficult to return them. I have to tell you that. I just have to be honest. It has been such a joy. Um, to have them in my uh, of course at the mitten day i was i got to video them and photo them and and all of that but i have i've really been able to uh examine them and hold them and and uh and all of that now i want to show you one that i've knit most of mine have been given as gifts but and i've knit emma grace i know three pairs of them but she lost the last she usually loses them so I did all of this in Hifa yeah I did all of this in Hifa Osk leftovers and this is too this is too small for me but I did it a smaller needle here's my um, Latvian braids and the diagram in a really light green and I did the the little in-betweens and I just took all of my leftovers and I made her uh, one that would fit her. And you, you can even see my decreases at the top and the thumb. And she lost one. So now it's just a decoration pint, we say in Norwegian. Super warm. Oh, this is super warm and super cozy. I just love it so much. Um... And she loved it too. She wore it quite a lot, but yeah, when they're younger, I knit this one when she was, yeah, I think she was yeah, maybe like 16 or so. Um, a cup, right, really not, not so long after the book was out. And, um, I knit this one for her, but she lost the other one. So, I hope that has given you a really nice overview of the book. And we've gotten the first uh, story of Putta, who um, in the end got his um, 
blueberries and his wild cranberries for his mom's birthday. And so I'll be back after I return from Edinburgh with the next pattern. And uh, that's an exciting fairy tale that you'll also find in English. Um, you can just look in your book and see which is the mitten is next and you'll know which one I'm going to be talking about. But remember, all of the, all of the mittens that I, that are, all of the patterns as I've shared with the blueberry mitten, um, they all follow the same. So, you know, size gauge. It's all in the same order for you. If there's a word that I have not translated and you would like translated, just please contact me and I will get that up on the blog translated for you right away. I know that I need to do Omkretz, which is the circumference, um, I realize, but um, I won't remember everything that is needed for you to use the book. But the idea is for you to be able to use this book fully and to knit all of these beautiful mittens. Now to end, I want to tell you that Norwegian fairy tales, they end always by saying the same thing. They end by saying snip, snop, snutte, eventir ar utte. The story is over. But this story is not over. So it's very fun at the end of the book uh, where they have the thank you. They say snip, snop, snutte, Eventir ar ikke ute. So this fairy tale trunk show is long from over. I'll look forward to seeing you after Edinburgh for the story of the second mitten within the book.